Living and working in the busy city of New York, Dvorak had not himself yet visited the prairies and the lakes or heard firsthand the legends and traditions of native North America. He had only Buffalo Bill and Hiawatha to inspire him. But when he went looking for that rare and lovely flower, the music of the people, he quickly found a far more immediate source all around him in the crowded streets and at the National Conservatory. Among my father's students, there were black people. Dvorak had never met African Americans before, and from his meetings with them, he soon realized the germs for the best American music lie hidden among all the races commingled in this great country. Someone gave him an article from a Chicago magazine. Negro music. No music in the world is so tenderly pathetic, so fraught with an overpowering heimweh as that of the Negroes. It is like the moaning of the wind or the cry of a lost spirit. Among the young African Americans at the National Conservatory was Harry T. Burley, a composer, singer, pianist, and arranger. Burley often went to sing in Dvorak's home. I remember Dr. Dvorak in his shirt sleeves with his kids around him, and bird cages all over the house with thrushes. He kept the cage doors open so the thrushes flew about freely and joined in my singing while I accompanied myself at the piano. These are the folk songs of America, and your composers must turn to them. Dr. Dvorak saturated himself with Negro songs. I sang them for him very often, and before he wrote his own themes, he filled himself with the spirit of the old spirituals.
for Dvořák, himself the national composer of a small nation oppressed by a much larger one. Any national music, Czech or American, had to be about the longing to be free. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. That is as great as a theme by Beethoven. As Burley himself said. Through all of these songs, there breathes a hope that man, every man, will be free. as Beethoven. 